Okay, thank you everyone for joining the Finance Committee meeting. This is April 14th, 2021, and I will call the meeting to order at 7.37 p.m. Um, so tonight is primarily a budget workshop for our FY22 budget. We have the Finance Committee in, in full presence. All committee members are here. We also have Peter Crusoe, our town administrator, online as well. Um, so I know we had set a uh, agenda item to approve previous meeting minutes. Angela, I know you were not at the last meeting. Um, I can send minutes around for that one. Do you know if we have any others that we hadn't approved yet from any of the prior, prior meetings? And it's okay if we don't have them ready today, obviously. I do have them. They're from the 24th, I think. Yeah, right before I got sick, I didn't send them. So I'll send them around. Okay, sounds good. So next time we meet, we'll, um, we'll approve any prior meeting minutes. So moving forward, I think today we want to um, primarily discuss the budget. Like I said, for FY22, we've had some conversations with various departments that we had tagged to um, discuss. So to date, we've met with library, senior center, public safety, treasurer, um, and am I missing anyone? I think that's it, right? Um, be it obviously the school. Um, so we've had our meetings uh, with those that we tagged. We did tap Brian Mulali from Highway to see if we could get a meeting set up with him. Um, I didn't hear back from him on that. However, I think that due to some revisions in his in his budget that Peter has made in his latest version, um, I'm not so sure we really need a discussion with him for the time being. So wanted to maybe start kind of high level and discuss where we stand overall and then we can get into any um, any detail. So we have a budget that's been revised and sent to us as of today. Um, that budget is pretty close to balanced. It's a probably the most balanced budget that we've had in a number of years and kudos entirely to, uh, to Peter on that and then also to just the various departments to work within the guidance. Of course, BMR played a huge part in this and their ability and willingness to work with the towns and work with us. So right now we have um, a $19,692 um, quote deficit. So that's the amount that we would need to balance our budget using um, what would be free cash or some other funding source. So as of today's date, we currently do not have any free cash available. Um, primarily, primarily the reason we don't have any free cash available as we've discussed before is because there was a, a timing issue related to some of the reimbursement for chapter 90s money. So we'll see that flush out in next year's free cash, but for this current cycle, um, we don't have any free cash to work with. So that means we're really using um, stabilization funds to account for any difference between the revenue that we can rely on and the expenses that we have included in our budget. Um, so that's kind of high level. Um, I think importantly, maybe to start, uh, if everybody has that stabilization summary that I sent around earlier today, um, I think that's a good just kind of level setting since we are going to be using our stabilization funds to account for any deficit that we have, um, noting, you know, what our stabilization balances are currently is important. So, and just for some historical background, you know, Angela, I know that you're, um, you're new to us. So currently I am happy with the stabilization balances that we have in place. Um, a few years back and not that many years back, you know, five years back or so, we were nowhere near where we are today in our stabilization balances. And that was truly attributable to the efforts that you know this group has put forward and the townspeople's commitment to getting Millville on a better financial ground. Um, so the townspeople were very receptive to the idea of um, putting aside some money so that we have them for a rainy day and we also have them available for cap various capital items. And then um, also recognizing that balancing the budget with one-time revenue sources such as free cash or stabilization or something like that is not a, it's not a prudent practice, um, widely speaking. So 
we are currently in a in a good pl place with our stabilization. Um, you know, OPEB, we are okay, <laughs> but I'm sure Peter will tell me that we have a long way to go there. Um, but we did put you know, a sizable amount into our OPEB fund, our last town meeting. So if we had any free cash, you know, I would be suggesting that we increase that for this, um, this cycle. We obviously don't. So that will stay at the balance that it is today. Um, general stabilization. So the beginning balance on that is according to um, Derek's ledger that he sent over today or yesterday is $779,361. So that's accounting for any of the capital items and any of the um, contributions that we made last cycle. That's our beginning balance. Our beginning balance in capital stabilization is 200,331. And our beginning balance on public safety is 210 dollars or 210,805. <coughs> Excuse me. So in total, that puts us over a million dollars in savings. Um, I was doing some due diligence on, you know, just stabilization balances in general and anything that DLS had in terms of guidance. And I actually meant to send this around to you guys, but I will after. So there are some restrictions to how much you're allowed to save into your stabilization fund as a proportion of your current operating budget. And then in total, so in total, the limit is 10% of your valuations for your town. So that is, you know, that puts us way, way, way underneath, you know, the limit to t in terms of stabilization balances that we are allowed to keep for our town. So I feel as though the balances that we have today are a good representation of a true effort to become, you know, kind of financially in a better spot than we were several years ago. But I also don't feel as though we are harboring like too much tax money and stabilization. You know, we're really being cautious about what we're saving this money for. We have capital plans in place. Um, we have various needs. So I think, you know, I, I feel good about where we where we are, but I don't I also don't feel overly comfortable. I don't know if anyone has any like questions about that or any other comments. Hey Aubrey, is there a um, is there a guidance on like percentage of the operating budget itself? Like do they uh, have anything on that? I'm just I think it's 10%, but I don't I can pull, I can try to pull it up while we're on this meeting or a little bit later. I think it's 10% of your operating budget that you're allowed to put aside. Um, there, DLS actually has a page where it shows which percentage of your operating budget you've actually put aside each year. That's based on our Schedule A. And I think the highest we've ever been was that year that we had two years consecutive free cash. And that was like 8% of our budget or something like that. Yeah, you, Aubrey, you just said allowed. I, you didn't mean allowed. You meant recommended, right? For the percentage of the budget. Um, no, actually, I didn't. I meant allowed. There's only a certain amount that you're allowed to keep. The idea being that you know taxpayers' money is intended to be spent. So we have <clears throat> our budgets seven million, seven hundred thousand, yes. ten percent. Yes. Yeah. Let me I, see. I, I, yeah, I know that's I, I was going I was getting along those same lines, Gary, I didn't know if it was a recommended because I think our budget's like 6.7 million or so right and if we're at 700,000. No, no, not in total each year. Each year put aside, not in total. Oh, so it's not like a your balance in your stabilization nope. can't be more than 10% of your okay. No, so you, so we cool. couldn't put away more than 700 or 670 yeah. thousand let me, let me just, year is what you're saying. Okay. Let me find it because I shouldn't be talking without having it in front of me. Hold on. But the, in, I guess what you're saying is that if we put that away, we can continue to save forever. We could, we could save that. It's just you can't put more than that away. Yes, per year. Yeah. That's right. Um, and let me just find it. Because with a town this small, like when you have education making up a big portion, like it can easily fluctuate. And so okay. having a balance like that is pretty important, yeah. Yes, okay. So um, this is what it is. It's 10% of the previous year's levy. So 
So annual appropriations to all stabilization funds may not exceed 10% of the previous year's levy. In addition, the balance of all funds at any time may not exceed 10% of the, of the community's valuation. Well, we're in no danger of exceeding either one of those, so. <laughs> right, well, that was my point. So that, that was exactly my point. <laughs> my point is, and I probably didn't articulate it well, but my point in all of this is to say we're well underneath any limit that is being set forth. Um, you know, that, that was my point. And I think technically OPEB is actually not a stabilization fund. It's a different type of fund. So it's not included within those general types of stabilization funds. So I guess my, what I was trying to say is that we have healthy balances in our stabilization, but we are, you know, well underneath 10% of our total valuations for the town well, well underneath that. Does that make sense? Or did I just royally confuse everybody? No, we're good. Okay. All right. So um, that said, we just discussed the beginning balances. I included all of the articles. So article three, six, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Those are the article numbers that have a financial impact um, and I presumed all articles would be, you know, let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to recommend all articles. What will that do to our stabilization balances? So at the end of the day, the total amount um, in stabilization, if we were to add all of those, um, all of those alloc uh, appropriations together, I think it was like $190,000 of appropriations for the year. Um, and our ending balance in our stabilization funds, including OPEP, would still be 1.15 million. So that includes the snow and ice deficit, which as of today was 70,959. Typically, we're using free cash to balance that. Um, this year, we'd be using stabilization. It includes the balance of the budget. So um, Peter's 19,693 in his current version of the budget it includes the capital items that were recommended by the Capital Planning Committee, which is the fire department turnout gear, the senior center improvements, the library improvements. <clears throat> and it also includes the police department cruiser, which um, is an article that you know, was split 50-50 on capital stabilization. I understand there's a citizen petition, so it will be on the warrant regardless. Um, so it also includes that full 50,000. Aubrey, just yes. for a little clarification. <clears throat> on the library improvements, the last meeting of the capital program committee, they had approved 30,000. I know we talked about it last week. They had approved 30,000. So that's currently what's on the warrant is what the capital program committee recommended to the board of selectmen. So at, at either at town meeting or at next Tuesday evening's selectmen's meeting, they'll revise back to this 16550 that you have for library improvements. The dip, the delta, or the the cause of the increase, and then the to 30, and then now the reduction was related to uh, submitting a, a green communities grant application and working with Mass Department of Energy Resources. They um, didn't like uh, the uh, return and the payback period for the library furnace or you know HVAC system that was being included in the grant. And so they recommended raising the town's contribution, which added 13.5 to, uh, to the library improvements. Uh, then the next is so then we the capital committee approved the 30 grand to in, increasing that amount by the 13.5. Then the next day, DOER came back the, uh, in reviewing the grant further and their math on the payback period and said it was uh, it was a non starter uh, to include that. There was not going to be any funding from the green grant to pay for the library improvements. So uh, I've recommended to the board and they'll ultimately presumably take action to go back to the 16550. Okay. Got it. And I thought so that I was the right number there. There's okay. There. So, yeah. Okay. 
And then separately <clears throat> in the public safety stabilization account, none of the activity for fiscal 21 is reflected in there. And so last year's activity was just about 30 grand that went into the account by the through the full fiscal year. By the time of town meeting, it remains to be determined what that amount will be, but there's some increase that's likely to be uh, made to the balances for the activity of this fiscal year, which by uh, voter approval and a couple of town meetings back, 50% of the ambulance receipts goes into this stabilization fund, public safety stabilization fund. And then the last point is that the uh, on the police department cruiser, which is now on the uh, draft warrant twice, one for what was put forth by capital, as you mentioned, and separately, there's a citizen's petition, which you have to include. Um, at and I met with uh, Mr. Gill's better half today at um, town meeting. I've, dis I've discussed with our recently departed town accountant, and I will be confirming with council in the next day or two, and certainly before the uh, next selectman's meeting. Uh, it, it appears that we can make a motion, or the motion can be made at town meeting to fund the purchase of the police cruiser, not out of this fund, but out of three prior years, or I think it's three, uh, actually four uh, prior year capital set asides, including the tasers. There was 10 grand put aside for the tasers last year that's not being used. There's 19. 372 that was put aside for police cruisers that's not being used and there's 20 grand that was put aside for ambulance purchase needs you know back in 27 or i'm sorry and back in 17 atm 17 and so forth so there's 49 grand there available that can be made during the motion to fund this is what i believe will be the case okay so in other words, the 49 grand is for previous year's appropriations from public safety stabilization to things such as police cruiser replacement, turnout gear, tasers. So the motion would be to repurpose those Especially since they this, were not yeah. used yep. for this. For this. Yep. And then, okay, so then my other question would be, um, that's fine, I guess, to the extent that this motion is being made, being made by a citizen, um, I guess that's just a point of order we'll have to consider is funding source and potential to amend a motion, right? Right. If, if the Board of Selectmen choose not to include that item on the warrant. Okay. If they do, then as you, you know, you'll see draft motions and those motions will include the funding sources. And based on what I know, which is not 100% certain, it will be as I described it. Okay, and the, um, so the ambulance receipts, I had asked Eric about that, he wasn't able to confirm, but could you just state again what you think the ambulance receipts will be uh, that for this FY21? Well, it's gonna be somewhere in the 20 to 25 grand would be my guess based on last year's activity. It might be less because of COVID-19 and an ambulance that was down multiple weeks, it might be higher because of COVID-19. I really don't know. So I haven't seen the activity. And 20 to 25 grand is the 50% number. Correct. Correct. Okay. And just as a side reference, uh, today the town did take possession of its brand new ambulance. Nice. Um, thanks to the efforts of uh, the Capital Program Committee, uh, Senator Fatman, Representative Soder, and all the work put in by the fire department to get the right kit put into that piece of equipment, which is pretty sweet. That's great. Okay, I'll stop talking. And the library improvements number that we have is accurate at 16550. You're just saying the warrant has to be amended to, uh, uh, to include that. Yeah, Not and fair. then there's, you know, whether capital program committee would change their motion on that or what they voted on previously because they voted on 30 so um okay. there's that's logistics that i'm not 100 percent certain on it yet so, so okay. Aubrey, I, it, I just want to understand this a little better so that the 210 805 which is our beginning balance for 
the public safety stabilization. Are we saying that basically it's not going to be reduced by 50,000 for the cruiser if if we use these previous years, um, I guess, mm -hmm. voted upon approved amounts that are sitting in some other account right now, right? That's not, I'm trying to understand yeah. this, like is it, this yeah. 49 grand that's sitting somewhere, we don't know where, but it's it was approved. And so it hadn't been used because we got grants, which was great that we got those grants. Um, but uh, the expectation is that we're not gonna be drawing down on the 210-805 then for the cruiser. Right, so mechanically, and this is something that I, uh, work to understand this week and kind of reread the way articles or motions are written. So when you make a motion to appropriate out of stabilization for a particular capital item, the, the motion, uh, the, the conclusion of the motion is that those monies are pulled from the stabilization account effective immediately and put aside as being appropriated for that particular purpose. And so the timing of that purpose is at least maybe not in all instances, but in, in many instances, depending on how the article is written and the motion is made, those um, monies can be spent at a future point in time based on the department head's discretion for the particular purpose that was voted on at town meeting. So what's happened is we've had previous motions, some of them going back to May of 2017, for example, with the police cruiser, where we put aside $19,000 from the public safety stabilization fund to purchase a new police cruiser, that money is quote held, you know, that's not the correct word, but it's being accounted for um, within the police department, they're saying, and within the town accountant, they're saying we have a particular, you know, now set aside funds for a police cruiser. And then at the end of the year, if the police cruiser has not been funded, it gets rolled over to the extent that the there is a department head that is responsible and can say, you know, I've I maintain that I, I will still be using this for that purpose um, and have not purchased it yet. And so it continues kind of perpetually. So we have, and, and if you have a previous allocation, for example, for the tasers and a grant came in, so we didn't need to, we didn't need to use the money at town meeting, you can vote to reappropriate those previously appropriated funds for the purpose of purchasing tasers to another purpose. And so they've already been taken out of the public stabilization fund, public safety stabilization fund. They're not in there anymore, but they have been allocated for a purpose that now at this point in time, we don't believe will come or chief doesn't believe will come to fruition. And so therefore we're able to reallocate those monies having the effect of not needing to take an additional $50,000 out of public safety stabilization. Is there a list of all of these somewhere? Yeah. I can forward it to you. Derek sent it to me this week. Okay. And then um, is there a way that we can be more specific in, in motions and, and more in items in the future so that it's just for that fiscal year? Certainly, um, that's something that can be done. I think like at minimum, personally, I believe that at minimum, we need, you know, a mechanism to keep our eyes out for these kinds of things. So we know, you know, what's still out there. Um, for example, you know, the, the, uh, the report that I received from Derek, which was as of June 30th, 2020, the $45,000 we appropriated for the police cruiser last year hadn't been spent. Now, I certainly presume that it's been spent at this point in time, but being able to see, you know, those, um, those ca capital items being kind of like funded and removed from the atmosphere of just being like out there, I think is something we need to figure out, you know, who's like really responsible for that and how many people, you know, capital, stable, capital um, planning, FinCom, but certainly the town accountant, you know, it's not something that has occurred to me in the past to look back up and see, you know, what's still out there. Okay. So bottom line is it's not going to touch our stabilization accounts if that motion were to get presented. Assuming it was presented with the funding source of those other previously appropriated amounts, then yes. Okay. And certainly when we make our recommendations, so for maybe Angela, for your benefit, the way that this works with our group is, you know, we're meeting tonight to talk through anything that we have questions on, to debate any items if we so choose. Um, but we make our actual recommendations for the budget and for capital items at our public hearing. 
So our public hearing will be May 4th. At that point, we go through every article, we um, open it up to any comments from the public for or against the particular article, and then we vote on each one. So for our recommendation, for example, for the police cruiser, to the extent that the recommendation was made to fund the cruiser with the exception that it be funded from these other sources, that's something that we can make in our recommendation or we can recommend to not fund it at all, or we can recommend to fund it from public safety stabilization if we so choose. Um, so just for everyone's, you know, to kind of level set, what we're going to be asked to do ultimately on May 4th is decide, do we think that this is wise or not? Okay, thank you for that. Um, so I guess high level on um, capital items and looking at these balances that we have and everything, um, does anyone have anything that we should talk through or think about? Um, and then we can, if not, or whenever we're done with that, we can go into the budget and just see if there's any differences between what we you know, believe is prudent and what Peter has set forth as his recommended budget. Okay. All right, so if nothing on the capital items, if we could turn to the budget itself. Um, Um, Peter, if you don't mind, could you just run through with us the changes from the last version of the budget so that we can kind of level set with beginning there? Sure. So um, I reduced the town hall uh, repairs and maintenance line from 12000 to 8000 essentially level funding with the budget from last year. I, it, as you may recall, I had increased that with the thought of trying to do something, but given the nature of the deficit, I thought that was an area we could save for a future objective. I added, uh, you know, as you may recall, we talked about the, some mandates that are going in for the police department training and so forth. Um, and we're in the midst of contract negotiations, which are yet to be finalized. But the mandates as the chief uh, estimated to the extent it was covered by the town would cost 20 grand. Um, but we're we've added so but he doesn't think we don't think the town will cover those costs necessarily. But there will be some increases, which are going into a uh, shift differential line item. So I've added 10,000 to the police department budget, which the chief is comfortable with as the total need uh, not the 20 and not extra for the contract beyond this 10,000 so uh, that was added and I reduced um, the highway materials from 50,000 down to essentially level funding to last year as per guidance uh, at and I put it at 40,000 so that gets you basically a reduction of uh, net 4,000 to what you saw last and uh, and I think on the highway side of things, you know, there's certainly a lot of discussion going on about um, infrastructure funding at the federal level. Uh, we also are an anticipating a slug of money for ARPA funding, uh, but the guidance isn't there. The official notice of that hasn't occurred, but there's going to be a lot of money floating around to do a lot of stuff. Um, not that we should count on it, not that it's in the bank, but uh, I think Brian's, you know, roadway needs on the, in the in not too distant future will be um, have some resources available beyond the operating budget. Thanks, Peter. Does anyone have any specific questions for Peter? I guess I do. Um, 
Peter, have you discussed with the various departments to the extent that we brought them down? For example, Brian, um, have I haven't you had to reach Brian, so I haven't had a chance to talk to him. Um, but I will twist his arm if need be. Okay. Mm. But um, Chief is in He's agreement. With what we're doing. And I'm a little bit obtuse because it, it, it relates to a ongoing contract negotiations as well. Okay. And this budget does include streetlights, right? It does. <laughs> I didn't touch them. I threatened, but hey. I didn't touch them. Well, what's what's the process, Peter? Yeah, once we, uh, now that we jack it back up to 20, what, like, are, is everyone getting converted right away? How's it going to work? No, so first of all, it, it has to be budgeted, right? Mm -hmm. So it has to be voted at town meeting if, in fact, you recommend that the line item be increased to 20 grand or whatever I have there. And uh, then it's notification uh, to National Grid. They'll come out right around with uh, Highway Surveyor Brian for because Brian has a few of them that he may not want, think need to be turned on because there's too much redundancy in a particular intersection. Uh, public safety chief would be involved to the extent there's a intersection safety issue. But otherwise, this is essentially converting them all to LED lights and uh, we're still leasing them. We're not going to own them. And National Grid says it's uh, three to six months to do the conversion and turn on. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Does anyone want to dig into any specific departments? Okay, um, maybe could we think about library for a second together? Um, so our goal with the library is to keep it certified, right? Um, we were able to get back up to certified levels this past year. Um, you know, I know they, they, so last year we recommended a budget that would allow us to certify. It did not include um, sort of assistant admin salaries. Um, the library needs to be open for 15 hours a week to keep it certified. So when we did the math last year, we said, you know, the library professional salaries that we had included, which was $17,000, would be sufficient to keep the library operating for 15 hours a week. And we did not recommend the admin salaries be funded. Um, this year, you know, they they confirmed that they, in fact, kept their assistant librarians on staff. They paid them through their um, through their trust money or, you know, their, their money that they had set aside. So they've been using their kind of savings to pay their li their assistant librarians. And they put that $9,200 back into their department request. So I think this year, we're in a position where we could swing that amount. Um, but keep in mind and Gary, keep me honest here. We need to be sure that we can continue to increase the budget by two, two percent, the three-year rolling average going forward, right? Yeah. So whatever the increase is this year, um, will effectively increase the Mars requirement <clears throat> by one third over what it was last year. Right. And so one third, we'll of the, one third of the sorry, one third of the increase versus last year. Yeah. So one third of the increase versus last year. So well, okay, and actually that's maybe that's it's a bit simplistic. I mean, it, again, last year would have been the three the rolling average for the previous years. So yeah, I, I oversimplified. The year the drops off will no longer figure into the average. Last year will figure into the average, or in this case, this year will figure into the average. Mm -hmm. So if we go up by whatever the amount, they're requesting an additional 10, 15,000, whatever the number is, then the requirement next year is not going to be that additional increase, but it's going to be, you know, it might be a third to half of it, depending on how the numbers show. Right. So we're probably still okay, um, but I guess the, you know, the thing we have to kind of lay out there is if we were to put that 
admin salary amount back in, you know, that doesn't mean we're going to always be able to afford that depending on the year. Um, right. And, you know, okay. we shouldn't just like assume, for example, that those two line items now increase by two and a half percent or 2% every year, according to the guidance, because we could be in a position where we're, you know, considering whether we need to defund our library again, which, or, um, decertify our library again, which is not where we want to be. Yeah, I mean, I, what I was talking about was a letter of the law, the law being the state requirement for the, the Mars portion of the funding. Mm -hmm. um, I think the reality of the situation is that if we increase it by this amount, you might as well consider that the new steady state amount. Um, because you, if you have it there for more or two, you're going to reach that as a steady state. And secondly, um, they will come next year with things above that. I just think for all practical purposes, that significant of a budget increase in one year right now is gonna get us back up to where we were sort of pre-override effectively. Mm -hmm. Even if it does, it, you're right. We do have some leeway to next year, there was an emergency and we had to drop and, and try to claw you know, 5,000 back out of that budget. We could do that without losing certification potentially. But I, I just see that as a very unlikely. So in terms of the trajectory going forward, what they're asking, same thing they asked last year, was essentially the level set that library budget at a higher level. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion. What do you guys think of that? And again, like I'm not trying to nickel and dime. I, I, my true prerogative here is to make sure we keep the library at the budget we can commit to continuing to certify it at. How did they fund it this year? They had like saving, so uh, some kind of a trust account or something, and they were using that to pay the assistant librarians. So if we gave them the funding, they would probably use those funds that they use this year for something else. Yeah, or I mean, they have a savings, but I'm sure it depletes and they don't necessarily have a lot coming in to take the place. So they'll run out eventually, Okay, you know. Yeah, I think they've depleted fund. Um, or maybe depletes not the right word, but they've certainly, they've utilized that fund over the last three years in the various stages of the library. So it's it's lower than it was last year, the year before, the year before that. So um, my guess is they're going to be looking to try and build that back up. But uh, you'd have to ask them, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I fear sometimes that our conversations with the library on, you know, our incentive here <laughs> to to really like safeguard the library for the future. We want the library to be certified and stay certified. We don't want it to be one of our departments that is on one year and off one year and on one year. And, and so the higher the rolling average is, the more likely it is that we could be in a situation where we are discussing decertifying the library at some point in the future. And so, you know, that's not something I think that any of us collectively, you know, would like to see. Um, this increase for us this year with the, you know, the bottom line where it is, I think it's totally doable for us, but it does go into the three year rolling average, which is going to continuously roll forward. And if we find ourselves in a year when the BMR ask is, you know, significantly higher than it was this year, which is certainly something we've seen in the past, or we have other, you know, other situations and we're forced to kind of look through our departments, the consequence to the library on decreasing funding is much greater than it is to some of the other departments, you know? Yeah, no, I, I think that that's the point here is like 46 is basic, 46,000 is basically gonna be the library budget, right? To have the assistant librarian, to have the, uh, the head librarian and then all the other kind of things they need. And so that's the question. That's eventually to Gary's point, that's gonna be the rolling average. And so are we, are we comfortable with that? Can we sustain that? Which is your point, Aubrey. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, now we know what that level is. I don't know. I mean, that's.
I mean, the, the other one for me, and I kind of, and I, I mean, the library is, is what it is, right? This is the level that I think it's going to be at. Um, but like the other one that, that kind of sticks out too is like COA where they kind of increased a bunch. And I, and is it, it, it probably for very similar reasons. I know I kind of got caught up with some of the meetings, but basically they're getting back to what would be a normal funding level for them. It looks like. Um, yeah. And these are the two the library and COA. Okay? Right. So you take public safety. That's a presumption that you know, we need good public safety school. Those are going to be our two big ones always. But then like, what do the people care about? And it's library, COA, and um, streetlights. So <laughs> turns out we checked off the streetlights this year, hopefully. Um, and we're at a much healthier place than we were several years ago, like I said. So, you know, maybe, maybe we're okay with these levels. We're still using one-time revenue to balance the budget this year. It's only 20,000, but in other years it might be greater. Um, but it's still significantly less than it once was. So, um, you know, just something to think about, I guess, as we make our final recommendations is specifically with library, it can't be looked, it can't be viewed with this year only. We need to really think about the fact that this is going to be reality going forward so as to not lose our certification again. Are there any other departments like that that, Anyone wants to call out or we need to think through? Aubrey, just a full disclosure in the overall thing. Um, this reflects what we know right now for the Tri Valley and uh, you know the other school there. We'll get the latest and greatest. This is you know what they they know of at this stage. So. To the extent there are increases to the students that are going to uh, those schools that could have a material, you know, that could be a big number. It's 25 grand a pop thereabouts, depending on the school. So we'll have the latest and greatest by the time of your public hearing, which hopefully confirms the head counts that they most recently confirmed. So like, as as of which date are these numbers? These are most current as we know today. Okay. All right, the head counts. All right, so. Um, so Tri-County and Norfolk Aggie really are the, the swingers of the budget at the mm -hmm. last minute. Okay. So keep your fingers crossed. Everybody's happy where they're going right now today. I guess we're kind of just going down the, the, the sheet here, Aubrey. I, one thing I kind of wanted to ask about, and Peter, you may, you probably have some, some information on this, is the planning board. So I know that they're trying, they basically got to a level where it, it seems like that's going to be uh, kind of where that department's at, or is that still kind of under, and, and we can expect it to kind of go up over the next few years? It looks like, you know, we've kind of got a shared service now. Um, is that kind of the level where it's going to be? Well, that was a yes. I think that's where it's likely to be. That's a certainly a, an increase to reflect the need that's typically not being met there for the support of the planning board and all the technical things that have to be done. You know, there's a lot going through there that uh, um, plans and whatnot. Um, so this yes re reflects a reasonable use of the shared planner. That process has yet to start. So they're still using the CMRPC fellow Gabe doing the work on a very limited hours each week. Okay, okay, that's helpful. Um, the only other one I kind of wanted to, to ask about Peter was the uh, MES water. And so I know that <laughs> that's, a, that's a, a topic that you really like to delve into, but uh, just any sense of long-term with that? I mean, can you see us ever kind of getting a savings out of that or is that eventually going down so if we don't change how we treat the water probably not going to go down uh long term and it's although uh you know i'm blue in the face for arguing it is a it is under the agreements but not practice um that it's a, a bmr cost according to the agreements 
but that's just not going to fly. You know, they'll argue all sorts of reasons why it's the town's burden, and it has been the town's burden. So will the uh, will, uh, annual costs go down? This year, you're probably going to see a reserve fund transfer request for one time only work that was done and things that were added in response to mass dep's requirements and conditions um because we're going over that budget it looks like i mean it, we're at the point we're spending sixty thousand dollars a year um on water, water nobody drink. drinks yes public water supply subject to you know and the testing needs are increasing there you know, I'm no expert. Ken's the expert. Um, but, uh, you know, the needs of what has to be tested and the levels that they have to qualify to be within, you know, limits uh, continue to be tougher and tougher. I think that's all kind of I had, Aubrey. Thank you, Peter. Mm -hmm. Yep. Anyone else have anything? On a similar subject, Peter, is there is there anything else that you anticipate that would largely go up for next year? I know we're talking about this year's budget, but it's always helpful to kind of think about next well, year. Well, I think you're going to see debt service increase for uh, BMR because you'll start seeing the debt service on the boiler. Okay, mm -hmm. how much that is, I you know I don't I don't have a reasonable sense of that, but there's a line item. Uh, will BMR's budget itself go up? Uh, it would not surprise me. Okay. Um, so that, and those are your biggest exposures, I think, frankly, and they can swing pretty wildly. I mean, just even, and then, you know, these other schools take BVT, you know, they added one student and there's 35 beans. Not to pick on any, but that's just what it is. Okay. Maintenance on the ambulance will go down. <laughs> okay. Anyone else have anything that stuck out to them or anything we need to think through? Did we want to discuss um, snow and ice at all, Aubrey? I know that kind of was left at the last meeting as far as I think you had kind of put in from from the stabilization that you talked about earlier mm -hmm. that we would take it out of stabilization. But I know kind of Gary had started to speak about it last meeting as well as far as maybe that wasn't the only option. Um, but I, eventually you're paying for it, so which I understand. But I don't know if we wanted to talk to, the, to that at all. Yeah, I think I... so. I was right. I mean, again, it, it can get rolled into the essentially the, the tax rate assessment for the following year. But um, I may need to apologize because I, I think, unfortunately, in my own head, I wasn't making the next step about the lack of free cash available um, and what that actually is. So, you know, it's got to be accounted for next year's budget, anyways, and we have nothing else. So it kind of leads us back to, I think, the point that, that Peter and as well as Aubrey last time we were both really making. So I apologize for the confusion, but unusual circumstances, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I mean, it's a fair, uh, I don't mean to pick on my favorite highway surveyor, Brian or anything, but it, that was a big number that surprised me to see the snow and ice deficit. I was always in my mind thinking 40 grand and we're looking at 70,000 bucks. Where I live, we don't see the weather that you see, okay? So I don't know to what degree, but it, it's my sense you had a fair number of frequent snow events as well as a fair number of frequent icing events. And so you're dealing with treatment of the roads, uh, even if it isn't a plowable event. So. You know, Brian would be the key guy to speak to that to the extent that's something you wanted to look at and look at historically as well. Because um, that's a pretty yeah. big number. And, um, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if there's a better way to control it. Um, it. From an outsider who lived in a 
town not too too much larger than yours but where everybody you know is on well water and and septic systems um that town really didn't use a lot of salt you guys to me seem to use a ton of salt so mm-hmm. i'll just say that um you people like your salt <laughs> i was raking it out of my sidewalk this morning this uh past weekend so yeah. so that's just something to think about yeah, I think it, we... you know material cost of that 150 grand of snow and ice cost i bet you at least a third of that or more is material cost i think you know we looked at we did a comparative analysis of snow and ice a couple of years ago um and we discussed this at some length with Brian and with others and uh, a number of factors, you know, the amount that we were leveraging contractors, for example, the amount that we were paying for rentals for the front end loader. So it'll be interesting to see what impact that has next year. And I suspect that this year, some of it's going to come out because, you know, we had some ice events as well that, um, uh, you know, that's really probably drives that material deposition. I mean, he could, we should continue to look into this for ways to improve it but um there's certainly a trade-off between capital investments and um flexibility resource flexibility i guess but we did to your point peter i think you're i think you're spot on because we did some you know basic calculations looking at expenditures per sort of road mile in town and uh, millville was was at the high end of what you would see so you have very good safe roads in those storms i would say so and i think you know the general consensus is people like that so that's you know that's a community you know value thing yeah um aubrey i apologize as i mentioned before Mm -hmm. i've got to drop off for a uh, a job call so uh, sorry everyone have a good night all right gary thanks gary Hey, hey peter is the um is the backhoe front loader in in service right now like if we it hasn't been purchased so that's not you know, yet. You're talking about these items that we want to repurchase repurpose for the, the cruiser in that same sort of grouping of accounts is still sitting the 45 grand for the backhoe that came out of the capital stabilization fund you know in the most recent one of the more recent uh town meetings is there so a is, plan is, to purchase it yeah, so he's, like he's looking to find the opportunity purchase was the last I got from Brian. And there was, you know, there wasn't much available uh, just before the winter. So um, I don't know what his current plan. He, he's got his eye on the market. It's a used one that he's looking it, for. It is the idea to have it kind of ready to go before the next winter season? Is that kind of the main use for it, right? Well, I think I he imagine. said that there are, you know, I think there's a lot of uses for that, including yeah. during the, uh, you know, the summer season. So to the extent there's an opportunity, he'll snag it. Maybe we could request since we have um, Jen go on the line and, and Ken, our chair and vice chair of capital, maybe after town meeting, it might make sense if you're open to it to have Brian in again to talk through the plan of his and purchasing it and snow and ice in general. And, you know, I think we, yeah, actually, Peter and I were talking about that as well as, um, and I think Peter mentioned this at the budget review for the board of selectmen that he had kind of tweaked the line that Brian had for road repairs because we don't we hadn't had like a, a plan explicitly to say, hey, you know, I'm looking at repairing, you know, this many feet of road and it costs this much per foot, so here's approximately what I would need. So um, I think we have a few things to just dig into with Brian. I know he's had a really busy season, so certainly. You know, not um, you know, not trying to cause issues or anything, but I think that now that we're getting to lighter weather times, he'll have a little bit more time to do that. Um, with capital planning, we he even pushed off looking into sheds and things like that they needed for storage for next winter, just because he didn't, you know, he admitted he didn't have the time to really look at it the right way. So we're looking at perhaps a few of those capital purchases in the fall town meeting for him. So, but yeah, we should absolutely do that post town meeting. Yeah, we almost have a quorum of the capital committee here because <laughs> I'm a voting member too. That's oh, right. Yeah. Almost. We need one more. Yeah, one more. You need yeah, four. That's funny. All right. And Jen, I guess while we have you, um, we were thinking, I know um, you guys are, the Board of Selectmen is meeting on April 20th, and then I think your next meeting is May 3rd, correct, after that. Mm-hmm. So to the extent that the Board of Selectmen have 
if you wouldn't mind checking um, at your next meeting, if you're open to having a joint session. Um, I think, you know, what I'm hearing right now, you know, absent our final recommendations at our public hearing is that we're, we're pretty okay with the budget that Peter's recommended, you know, with perhaps a couple of tweaks, but maybe if we could meet a, together on May 3rd to go through the latest where we stand, you know, with the latest and greatest, if any numbers have changed, and then talk through as a collective Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee, see where we're, our heads are at, um, and then the Finance Committee will be making its recommendations on May 4th. Okay, and I'm sorry, did you want to do May 3rd as just a joint meeting or a joint public hearing? No, just a joint meeting, and then our the Finance Committee public hearing will be May 4th, of which, of course, the Board of Selectmen is welcome to attend and participate in as well. Yeah. Do you think, do we need a public hearing for capital planning to kind of go over what we're proposing for spend? Because we could do it together. We only have a, we only have a few items on our uh, the capital side. I'm trying to remember what we did last time. Did you guys have a separate public hearing or did you just join ours? I think we did it all. Joined, we joined theirs. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. And, and really capital recommends to you guys make the, and the board of yeah. selectmen. So. It, but capital's already yeah. made its recommendations, That's right? Correct. So I think, Jen, what would make sense in my opinion is if capital or a representation of capital, since you've already made your um, recommendations, if representatives from capital are available on the fourth, obviously Ken will be there. Um, you can field any questions from the public at that time. And then I think your recommendations are already made and we'll make our recommendations based on, on that. But Okay. That works. And yep. as far as good. coming to the selectmen's meeting on the third, they start at seven typically. Is that going to work for finance? I know the last time you came in an hour early. So um, it's a Monday, right? Yep. Yeah. So, Brian, you're the Monday, Wednesday guy, right? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll have, um, I can skip out a little early, I'll have the assistant coach uh, take over the rest of the practice, but uh, <laughs> I'll make it, yeah, I, I can make it work. So if we could, if you're willing to allow us to do seven um, with you, that'll mm -hmm. allow Brian to make it and skip out of his commitment a little early. I think any earlier than that, we probably wouldn't have Brian and I'd like to have him if we can. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Going to be five dollars, Brian, to keep the meeting at seven o'clock. Wow, that's a bargain! Thank you. Jeff. Right, it goes to Peter. Yeah, gas money. <laughs> gas <Yes>. money, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so um, just to summarize our plan, next two weeks I am unavailable for a meeting. However, Peter, my request to you would be if anything materially changes. So. I'll text you. Reason. Yeah, exactly. You can call me and I'll include you in whatever emails to the extent you're looking at those, but have no intention of disturbing you. Okay. Um, if you could also just include Brian as yeah. well, and that way we can cover each other. And um, otherwise, I think we, our plan will be just to meet again on May 3rd and go through the numbers again, you know, as we just did. And I will prepare similar to. Um, what I've done in the past, I'll prepare just a basic presentation for our public hearing, which summarizes like numbers and stabilization accounts and things like that. Um, and then we can do our public hearing, I think, subject to the Board of Selectmen approving the last that I've heard on an annual town meeting date is that it will, um, it will, the proposal is that it will be on May 10th yeah. um, at Millville Elementary at seven o'clock consistent with our bylaws. Yes. Okay, um, and then finally, I would just like to thank everybody, um, especially Peter and Jen and you know Ken for being on the capital planning committee, um, and certainly all the department heads. You know, I think this year is a truly a, a good year. Um, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and yet we have come the close closest that we ever have to balancing a budget. We have healthy stabilization monies. We have a capital planning committee that is up and running and we're making capital purchases that are necessary for our town. So I feel really good about where we are today. And it's just a testament to all the 
parties working together, you know, VMR, um, our relationship with them has grown so much in the past five years, where in the past we were seeing, you know, these astronomical increases that we couldn't control and maintain, and it was putting us into a tizzy. And now the administration there is so open to involving the towns and discussing with us early, and um, it made a world of a difference. So I'll say all this again at our public hearing, I'm sure. But you know, thank you, thanks Peter for doing the legwork on the on the budget and. You know, I think if we compared our hours worked on budget from three years ago with where it was today, it would be evidence that, you know, your role has really added a tremendous amount of value. Well, you know, the department heads, just as you described, everybody, uh, is, you know, it's a collaborative group effort. Um, and, uh, and it's also rational thought processes uh, on all decision makers, including you guys. You guys do a, you know, Millville's lucky to have expertise that it does sit in on this uh in this room right now all right all is there a motion to adjourn at 8 38 p.m i'll make a motion to adjourn is there a second okay all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. all right thanks everybody Thank i'll you. see you again on may 3rd thanks very much peter